Hey, it's the, the morning after Easter Sunday. It's Monday morning. And we're back on with our, our online devotionals. Since it's the, the day after Easter, I wanted to start by talking about somebody, somebody who lived 2,000 years ago. He showed up in first century Judea and claimed to be a teacher from God. Many Jews left their homes, left their families to follow him. They were believing that this was the Messiah that they had waited for, the, the miracle worker that they had been hoping for. And this man was executed by Romans and his followers dispersed. The name of that man was Thutis. Now, that's probably not who you thought I was talking about. But that's a real story of a man named Thutis who fit that exact same description. And what's interesting is that Jesus was not the only Messiah, was not the only would-be Messiah of, of first century Israel. There were actually several people who showed up to first century Judea and claimed to be the chosen one, uh, said they were teachers from God, and then were executed by the state, just like Jesus. And in fact, Jesus wasn't even the most famous in that day. He, his, his name never made the, the history books before his death and resurrection anyway. There were no Roman history books that, that mentioned him before the time of the book of Acts. Um, so what... What was the difference? What, what, what's, the, what's the difference between then, this unknown prophet that we're still celebrating today, that we celebrated yesterday, and all of those other men that fit that same description? Well, we're going to read a passage from the book of Acts, and I think it's going to help uh, to give us an answer. So Acts chapter 5, uh, before I read verses 33 through 40, the, the context is that the, after the death and resurrection of Jesus, the church began on the day of Pentecost, and a few years then went by, and people were getting saved every day, and the apostles were moving in the power of God. And now in Acts chapter 5, this is now the second time that the apostles have been imprisoned for preaching the gospel. But this time, an angel shows up to the prison in the middle of the night, lets them out, commands them to keep preaching the gospel in the temple. So the apostles obey, and then the religious leaders are confused when they don't find the apostles in the prison cell. They find them in the temple preaching again. So they call Peter and the rest of the apostles in and question them and say, what the heck are you doing? Basically, Peter responds with, we have to obey God and not you. So then this is what happens next in Acts chapter 5. When they heard this, the, re the religious leaders, they were furious and wanted to put them to death. But a Pharisee named Gamaliel, a teacher of the law, who was honored by all the people, stood up in the Sanhedrin and ordered that the men be put outside for a little while. Then he addressed the Sanhedrin, Men of Israel, consider carefully what you intend to do to these men. Some time ago, Thutis appeared claiming to be somebody, and about 400 men rallied to him. He was killed. All his followers were dispersed, and it came to nothing. After him, Judas the Galilean appeared in the days of the census and led a band of people in revolt. He too was killed, and all his followers were scattered. Therefore, in the present case, I advise you, leave these men alone. Let them go. For if their purpose or activity is of human origin, it will fail." But if it is from God, you will not be able to stop these men. You will only find yourselves fighting against God. His speech persuaded them. They called the apostles in and had them flogged. Then they ordered them not to speak in the name of Jesus and let them go. So Gamaliel is basically saying, this is going to come to nothing just like all of the other would-be messiahs of our day. 
nothing's gonna happen. Probably he said it with a scoff. He probably said it with a smirk on his face. But we know now 2,000 years later that the exact opposite happened. That church would continue to grow. In fact, it would outlast the Roman Empire, the longest lasting empire in all of human history. The church would continue to grow and grow and grow until 2,000 years later, yesterday, in every city of this nation, people were praising and proclaiming the name of Jesus of Nazareth. It's clear from, from history, not just church history, but human history, that Jesus was not just a prophet. He was not just another would-be Messiah of first century Judea, that he was exactly who he said he was, that he was the only way to the Father, the truth, the life, that he was even more than that, the I am, the one who existed before Abraham was even born. So just if you're tempted to focus inward today, just as you're stuck in your house for another day in this quarantine, I encourage you just to look up and look out at Jesus and his movement that started and cannot be stopped. That's why Isaiah wrote, and we'll end with this, of Jesus, Isaiah wrote, the government will be on his shoulders and he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace, of the greatness of his government and peace, there will be no end. Bless you guys. See you tomorrow.